Hey there, just want to let you know that a portion of this video is sponsored by Google One. What happens to a person after a video of them goes viral? Not like a few hundred thousand views viral, like worldwide viral. All of a sudden, you go from being an ordinary person, living your normal life, to becoming an international celebrity. Some people's lives have changed overnight from this kind of internet fame, creating a small group of people that one can today call memes. We've been on YouTube for almost six years now, and some of these people were the early day icons of the platform. But what are the stories behind these legends? Does overnight fame transform your life for the better or for the worse? And where are they today? Well, after weeks of investigating, searching through corners of the internet, we found three of them. Antoine Dobson in Alabama from the Hide Your Kids viral video. So had your kids, had your wife, and had your husband. Because David after dentist. Is this real life? Yeah, this is real life. Who's now in college in Florida, which made me feel very old. And the final one will be a surprise for those of you who have been watching YouTube for a long time. These stories were incredible and surprising in so many ways. So we're excited to take you along on this adventure to three corners of the country to track down some of the earliest legends of the platform we now call home. Also, if you're not subscribed, please take a second to do so right now. It would mean the world to us. Hit like on this video. And now, enjoy the adventure. I mean, we literally have no plan right now. We're just rolling up. We're gonna meet this guy who once upon a time was a complete legend and now I have no idea what he does. No matter what, it's gonna be an interesting day. He's climbing in your windows. He's snatching your people up, trying to rape them. So y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband. Okay. Oh, there he is. Antoine. What up, bro? Hey, how are you? Good to meet you, man. Yeah. How's it going? Nice, nice to meet you, man. You. Nice to meet you. Hi. Yeah. I'm Mark. Nice to meet you. Man, I can't, believe, I, can't, I can't believe I'm seeing you in person right now. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's the goal of the day will just be to get like a Huntsville tour from you. As we do that, I get to ask you a little bit about the craziness of being seen by 140 million people and I know. Your, your, what, what you <laughs> said. is one video. Oh, man. Yeah, exactly. Actually, uh, we're in a deal right now with NFT. Oh, Fuck yeah. Sick. How do you feel about it? I just see dollar signs. <laughs> I see dollar signs. But it has been 11 years, so. Still people come up to you and things like yes, that? Yes, yeah. all the time, all the time. Do you need your cell phone or do you want to leave that there? I'll leave it there. <laughs> I'm not forgetting his cell phone. Nobody gave me a handbook on being Antoine Dotson. One day I did a video because my sister got attacked. I was upset. And the next thing I know, I'm just super famous and everybody know me. And now, a few days later, I got this, uh, the Gregory brothers, they done created a song. He's climbing in your windows. He's snatching your people up. Trying to rape them. So y'all need to hide your kids. Hide your wife. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. And hide your husband. And now then we're super viral. And Everybody calling me, asking me to do this, come to this city, come to this state. We'll pay you this amount of money. I'm like, shit, I never got off of this type of money in my life. So it was a lot. When you're in the hood, you think you're the smartest mom in the world. Until you sit down with them corporate people, you just realize how dumb as hell you are. I didn't get into a lot of bad contracts because I did not understand. Yeah. It sounds like you have a, you've had a full odyssey of a, of a life. I come from a family of nine children. No father around, disabled mother. I'm the oldest of all of them. Who do you think is gonna pick up the slack? When I was a kid, I wanted to be an entertainer. I wanted to write. I thought I was the neighborhood celebrity because everybody liked my hair and my shoes. So in my mind, I'm this celebrity. But I didn't think that many years later that I would actually become one. It's mm. not something I thought would happen. What I'm makes your video or virality uh, so unique is that you went viral because you were being you. I always doubted, I always thought it was like some producer for the news goes there and they were like, okay, turn it up for the camera. But I mean, evidently it's just who you are. And this moment was just like a reward for you sticking to who you are unapologetically. And the way I'm experiencing you in person, even when the cameras are off, I would say it's very consistent with the character that I saw on the news 11 years ago. <laughs> All right, we are we are currently headed to where Antoine did the interview 11 years ago <laughs> to get a, like a scene by scene play for how it all went down. My childhood dream happening all at once. When was the last time you were here? I was here the last time like three or four years ago. And when I got here, I realized that my neighbor that was out here when we was out here still stay out here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, here we are. Let me show y'all. Let me give y'all a little walk through. <laughs> Wait, so yeah. what happened exactly? I guess maybe I'll let you tell the story. This is the living room and her couch was on that wall. 
This was my sister's room where it all went down. And I was asleep on that couch. I hear a scream in my sleep and I immediately jumped up and I go to her bedroom. And when I bust open the door, I seen in the silhouette-like image, I could tell it was a man that was on top of her. I just remember pulling him off because he ain't had no shirt. And you know, I keep long nails. And I dug my nails into his shoulder and poured him and swung him into the uh, hallway. And he did this little, you know, this little, basketball move you know i'm tall as hell so i can't get that low but he did a little basketball move under my arm i'm with a whole bunch of girls they all out of control i don't know how to calm them down i mean that is the yeah, so the strange like, part about the whole thing right is that you were you were being serious yes you know even <laughs> us we're here we're like wow this is crazy but it's a real story yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a disconnection between the reality of an event when it's become like an entertainment, entertainment. You know, people don't put themselves in the shoes of this person mm -hmm. actually lived that. The police came and they escorted us out and he was like, well, let me show you how he got in. And the dude used the city garbage. Oh my to God. To prop, to jump on that and get in. It's now, still almost set up. <laughs> like it could be a step. Look. Boom, boom, boom. So the police came and escorted us. And I'm just thinking like, I know this case is not gonna be solved if I don't do nothing something about it. So I sat there and went through them yellow pages and talked to a um, investigator and he came out here and met me the next morning and we went through everything. He did dusted all the fingerprints and stuff. <laughs> he did picked up the t-shirt. You know, I'm walking around, I'm like, look, this way he was, his <laughs> knee was right here. So I know he got like a little sweat mark right there. His t-shirt right there, he touched that. You Basically, watched some CSI. <laughs> I, yeah. You know I do. He so probably he's, got, he's in jail now? He's in jail for a, another crime. So no need to hide your kids anymore? Hell yeah, had your kids up with somebody just like him <laughs> around the corner. So you hired an investigator that came and helped you figure this out. And then how did it lead to news? So when he pulled up and we going through everything, I guess he hit up Jenny and was like, girl, look, I got a lay investigation, girl. Y'all need to come out here and talk to him, you know. I see Jenny and her cameraman getting out the car. They try to hurry up and set up because they see I'm about to clown. <laughs> and as soon as I was getting ready to say something to her, Jenny was like, do you want to say something in front of the camera? I said, well, obviously <laughs> we have a rapist in Lincoln, Lincoln Park. Park. He's, He's climbing, climbing in your windows. windows. He's snatching your, your people people up trying to rape them so y'all need to hide, hide your kids hide your wife and hide your, your husband too. when he when he was standing next to you and he did the whole part and then use i i had a moment i was like this is like a, mer a weird merge of like reality and the internet where yeah. i'm standing where an actual thing happened and, and the man that said the thing is <laughs> saying it again <laughs> it was so yeah. trippy thank you for sharing all this it's yes. also a very vulnerable story, so I appreciate you being Thank you, yeah. honest and vulnerable and fully yourself. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. A Huntsville legend. He put Huntsville on the map, okay? I did competition cheer in Morovia Middle School. We had hide your kids, hide your wife. Morovia! Yes, yeah. like that was literally one of our transitions. She came up and she said that she didn't want to make a big deal out of it because she didn't want to make you feel uncomfortable, but right away she knew who he was. And it makes me teary-eyed knowing because she was like, I was a little girl. I was in Monrovia school, uh, elementary. To see her all grown up working and shoot, it just warmed my heart to know that I had that impact on people's life. Oh my God. I hope I didn't teach these kids to be thoughts. <laughs> Back where we started, what a journey it's been. Oh my god, it's been such a journey. I had so much fun. I now have a friend in Huntsville. I I'm know, literally like, I got an LA friend. Thank you so I'm much. Oh. What do you think, Habibs? I'm pleasantly surprised. You know, this whole time we were just seeing one element of it, which is his way and his personality, but he's actually a hero. He was doing something pretty heroic and dangerous to make sure that he's there for his family. So uh, that's the part that I'm like pleasantly surprised about. And I, and I hope that through this, more people remember him for the fact that he was doing something that put his life in danger for others, as well as hide your kids, hide your wife. There you have it. Now that we're done in Huntsville, Alabama, off to the next destination. Before we do so, a quick message from the sponsor of today's video. Hi there. Before we move on with the rest of the video, let me quickly thank the sponsor of today's video, Google One. Google One. What is that, you may ask? What is that? What is that? Google One is a paid membership that allows you to back up and protect everything that matters to you in your digital life. That's right. It provides you with expanded cloud storage, works with Gmail, photos, Google Drive, to give you more freedom to store more memories, photos, and who knows, maybe a couple emails. All right? You see, let me tell you a story. Recently, I lost my phone and had not upgraded my cloud storage, and I ended up losing a devastating amount of photos that were highly dear 
in my heart. But with Google One, 100 gigabytes of storage is only a $2 a month. 15 gigabytes comes with your Google account. So all you gotta do is download the app straight to your phone. Back it all up and manage your cloud storage settings all in one place. Get it? Google One, no, I'm saying. <laughs> Google One also offers security features like a VPN for Android to make sure that you are safely protected while you are connected. So be sure to download the Google One app today or go to one.google.com to find out the different plans. Thank you once again to Google One for sponsoring this portion of the video. And now, back to the YouTube legends. We are currently in Orlando, headed to Gainesville. Gainesville. What is it? What is Gainesville? We're gonna go see David after dentist. Is this real life? Yeah, this is real life. <laughs> he goes to University of Florida, and right now we're gonna go find him on campus, pick him up, and uh, catch up. Hey, pal, how you been, man? Yeah, it's that big day, <laughs> you know. Oh, Hi. <laughs> what's up, dude? Good. How are you guys doing? I was like, is that him? What's up, bro? We're good. How are you guys doing? Oh, man. Great to meet you. Um, Yeah, so my girlfriend's actually here, and she, um, we're going to load up her car because she's headed out of town. Oh, cool. Um, So, like, give me, like, 10 minutes or yeah. so, and I'll be good to go. Okay. Amazing. Okay. Awesome. Well, see you in a bit, dude. see you guys dude. in a second. Okay. We oh. literally came from a different state and he's like, oh, let me just go pack my girlfriend's car. <laughs> we flew here to hang out with you, bro. Hey, man, I gotta go pack my girlfriend's car. What up? Take two. <laughs> came all the way Legend. just for this. <laughs> nice to meet you, man. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It made me feel very old to find out that you were in college. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you get that a lot. Yeah, a little bit. What are you studying? Computer science. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sick. The first thing I was gonna do with you is question your life choices of yeah. not becoming a dentist. <laughs> Oh, really? Because I feel like you would have, you would have had the yeah. greatest mark thing. Honestly, for, probably. Yeah, yeah. Like nobody gets what it's like to leave a dentist office more than they would have to Yeah. So how yeah. big is this as a part of your life still today? Is it still like a part of your life or is it just like a memory? I think it's a part of my life, honestly. You know, there's David DeVore and then there's David after dentist kind of thing. Yeah. Um, um, you have an alter ego. Yeah, of exactly. Being on drugs coming right. from the dentist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did you expect that to I mean, I guess you can't really expect virality to happen. Oh, yeah, no. He was just doing it to share with uh, family and friends because it was funny. Dude, should we go see if we can do a drop-in at a dentist right now? Dude, that would be really <laughs> Amar needs to check up anyways. Really Hello. Yeah. Are you the dentist? Yeah. Can, can I fix you something? Fine. Do you remember the, the viral video, David After Dentist? This kid, yeah. 13 uh, years ago, yeah, yeah. on the screen. So that's him right now. He's oh, really? in college. <laughs> and we're trying to get a dentist appointment with him because it would be really funny to take David into yeah. the dentist office. Yeah. Courtney, there you go, dear. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this almost looked staged. Yes. This is great. <laughs> it literally looked like staged. I didn't think it was gonna work. <laughs> Okay. Front and back and bring it back up when you're okay. done. Okay. He definitely regrets saying yes to any of this. He's yeah. like, what the? F I've just had a normal afternoon in my fucking college. <laughs> <laughs> we are seeking discomfort with him in the end. David after Yep, that's him. <laughs> How you doing? Well, you're very good. Wow, this is a full circle moment. Are you ready to relive it? Yeah. <laughs> Open <Hi>. big. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. <laughs> No, it's not great. David is not doing well. Uh-oh. Oh, God. <laughs> well, obviously, David has been away from the dentist for a long time. <laughs> is that true? No. Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Yes. Then, no. then your no. dentist hasn't been telling you straight, man. Your bones are inflamed. Here's the key. Four minutes in the morning. Okay. Four minutes in the afternoon. <laughs> okay. So two minutes brushing. Okay. One minute water picking. Okay. 15 seconds tongue scraping. Okay. No less than 45 seconds mouth rinse. Okay. Four minutes. This got real for, it got real. for Dave and everybody watching. <laughs> it's like, Everyone's going back to hear their teeth. And it's going to be because David finally came back to the dentist after 20 years. Is that how you hold your floss? No. How do you hold your floss? Like, for, for real, man. For real, David. I ain't got time, David. David's gums are not good. It's just like most of the population. I don't think you should look at mine then. No, I shouldn't. And the reason I know that your gums aren't good is because you never heard of a water pick. So how could they be good? Yeah, so that's it. You are cuter when you were younger. Oh, thank you. Much cuter. I don't know what the hell happened. Oh, my God. Well, guys, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. This was great. That was yeah. fun. Yeah.
Thank okay. you. Bye. Have a good one. David was very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, that sucked. That sucked. <laughs> Sorry, dude. That Most was the worst. spontaneous dentist visit of all time. That was worse than normal dentist visits. <laughs> He oh just God. roasted me so hard. Oh, I'm sorry, David. <laughs> you already don't like the dentist. Oh, yeah. And now you got roasted in yeah. front of everyone. There yeah. was like eight people watching you get oh, roasted. Yeah. Yet he has like four hairs on his head. Oh, oh. clap it back. <laughs> Doc. Um, all right, buddy. We got you a little gift. Oh, you got me a gift? I got you a gift. Oh, you got one of these? I got you one of them. The water pick. Oh, <laughs> pretty cool <laughs> you gotta be the model for no. dental hygiene no, for kids all over the it. world thank you for everything yeah. no uh, thank you. Us. hopefully we'll all see right. you around yeah let us know yeah. if you're ever in la man put this into good use yeah if you ever think about being a dentist you just hit me up i'll invest okay <laughs> wow. him and anton were so different in terms of like their how this how that video affected their lives for sure for him he was a kid it was a fun thing that became an anecdote for him and some people recognize for him and he's got a story but he's not what he's trying to do he's studying computer science i guess next is seattle how's my hair your hair is fantastic amazing we're in seattle the third city we are here to meet with Tezonde. he i think has the oldest viral video of all the ones that we've looked at so far uh, chocolate rain chocolate rain the school books say it can't be here again chocolate rain I personally didn't know about it because it wasn't a part of the YouTube world <laughs> back in the day I was in Egypt still but whenever I mention it to anyone everybody always knows what I'm talking about so. I know exactly what chocolate rain is yeah. it was the birth of YouTube I remember watching on like E-bombs world I was like what is this I'm like starstruck a little bit <laughs> and you're about to meet him like hello Mr. Chocolate Rain <laughs> <laughs> so Thomas should be here but he's not because he's currently in North Dakota. Whole other story for another episode, which you'll probably watch coming after this. Also, hit me with some news. Yeah, yeah, there's, we've got some news. I think there should be some sort of a scavenger hunt every time Yes Theory films in a city where we end up leaving a prize of some sort. Wink, wink. When we leave, people can see the places that we filmed that in, in that specific episode and try and figure out where we might have hid this QR code that I'm gonna tell you about at the end of this video. So stick around. Hello. Hey, hey, hey. Great to meet you. Nice to meet you. Too. Tommy, we're here from the bar. Yes. We're gonna tell you the full story of how this man became an internet sensation oh, 14 wow. years ago. I had uploaded Chocolate Rain as an afterthought. It was not intended as a finished, finished version, just kind of like an experimental concept, like a lot of the stuff I uploaded on YouTube. I mean, YouTube was just kind of a repository for my creative afterthoughts, you know, a place where maybe I could share a thing or two that I sang and see what people thought about it. That was the spirit that I came to YouTube with in 2007. I think at the time that it went viral, the experience of having a viral video that led to worldwide exposure was an unfamiliar experience to the public. That meant there were no breadcrumbs to follow. I couldn't ask, what did Rebecca Black do? What did Antoine Dodson do? The way YouTube virality worked, where, you know, either with Soldier Boy's dance, where, you know, people were like, yeah, I don't know, Soldier Boy, that's my very bad imitation. <laughs> no, that was great. Um, <laughs> or, you know, so you chocolate rain in front of your own bed Whoa. sheet in, in your own living room. Chocolate rain. I didn't understand my moment and what made it special to other people. Mm -hmm. I feel like Tazon Day was sort of this character and then Adam Bonner, which is my government name. Adam Bonner had his own mental health journey and unfulfilled dreams and things that he wanted to be popular as. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like, instead of just kind of knowing what the moment was and having self-awareness, I think part of me almost played out my own anxieties and was kind of like, well, I'd like if I could pivot this to be popular in this way. And I'd like to be popular in the way someone like Robbie Williams or someone like Frank Sinatra. Now I think I'm in a place where I'm much more self-aware and leaning into that journey of, hey, I'm autistic. I've been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. That's a huge part of my experience, huge part of my mental health experience. At the time when Chocolate Rain was blowing up and I had all of this pressure applied to me, three of the four major labels at the time were interested in signing me as an artist. Wow. Everyone was contacting me to sing at their kids bar mitzvah, sing at their corporate party. Literary agents wanted to sign me. Uh, I was just a kid who had an accident in my living room that led to frenzy, this exposure, yeah. this yeah. frenzy, and you know, the next year being parodied on South Park, etc. 
Um, wow. What? I didn't know what I was saying yes to or no to. I mean, I said yes to things, but I didn't have a preconception of what saying yes to doing an ad with Dr. Pepper would mean. Though the moment of heat was happening and fame was happening, I was still very much knowing that I had a tremendous amount to learn about myself. I knew that the journey of learning about myself could not, I had no fast forward button. I couldn't say, well, I'm very hot now and the world is super interested in me, so I need to be the person who I would be after 20 years of learning about myself. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, uh, I kind of had to learn and figure it out as I go. When somebody meets you in public, they want you to immediately be that moment that made them most happy. I find that the more I have to be presentable out in public, etc., all of that behavior is what would be called in the context of autism spectrum disorder, masking when an autistic person attempts to seem neurotypical, seem like they do not have autism. Public attention caused me to have to engage in a lot of masking. And I feel like masking takes me away from my best creativity. Not any continent, I mean, it happens in, 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 in other cities wherever I grow on this earth. Someone is going to recognize me. Someone is potentially going to be filming me. Uh, that's what I love about putting something in a song as opposed to typing it in a tweet or saying it if it's in found footage, somebody hears you talking at a restaurant. Like, oh, I heard him saying this. When it's in a song, you are controlling the narrative from beginning to end. And in many cases, that narrative cannot be pinned down. Uh, for 10 years, I did not talk about Chocolate Rain and it's being initially written as a ballad about institutional racism. I would dodge the question. Honestly, I'm a bit starstruck to be here with you because I've not only seen Chocolate Rain, but I, obviously, but I've seen like you kind of pop up in the past 14 years and like other YouTube channels and like watched yours as well. I'm super inspired by you as a creator, because I feel like everything you make is so genuine. Yeah, I just want to say that. <laughs> it's not so much of a question, it's more of like a, an acknowledgement of your creativity and your talent. Like, I, I can't wait to see what you make next in a way. Oh, well thank you so much. You're one of the most articulate people I've ever met. You're like spot on with what you're saying about the, these things, these elements to the human experience. Oh, well, that's very kind. Um, I don't really like filming myself, living alone, trying to film myself. The moments that come out, when someone like Yes Theory films me in interviews, I think a better, truer version of me comes out than mm -hmm. if I'm just sitting around inside trying to create stuff. Okay, uh, well, awesome. I think uh, it's time to do this. To hide this baby. It's time to hide this baby. <laughs> She's like, your friend looks like Tezane. I was like, oh, it is, it is Tezane. <laughs> yeah, I remember yep. Chocolate Rain, but I used to listen to that as a little kid. <laughs> oh my goodness, well thank you so much. I <laughs> tried to get this so that you can keep, it, right you can keep it for the map. Wow, it's for you. Hopefully. Oh, well, oh my goodness, thank you. <laughs> Got one final mission, and that is to hide this code for one of you who's gonna see the video, come find the code, scan it, to win a trip to their dream destination that they will enter when they scan the code. I think I found our spot. Done, Seattle check. Seven days after this video comes out, we're gonna pick someone to win a flight to their dream destination. And every city that yesterday travels to, we're gonna try and do this in. Here we go, we, we, we have the form. QR code hit. Try and find out, it's somewhere in there. Try and figure it out. Okay, well, this is three out of three viral legends. We are incredibly grateful for the time that you gave us and for just like you sharing your perspective and your life and your story with us. So oh, well, thank you for yeah, uh, we, we really, doing If you're ever in LA, you know that you have a place to come and hang and I hope that you think of us as, as friends and as people you can always reach out to. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. I appreciate that. And you have a huge fan right here. <laughs> I'm waiting for more music. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Should we get a producer? For you, any the biggest <laughs> producer in the world to help you out. I'm putting it out there. Okay. It's good energy. I appreciate it. Can I give you a hug? Thank you. Going viral at the scale that these three legends have is not something anyone can predict. Some of our most viral videos were surprises to us as well. All I can say is that connecting with these highly different yet fascinating individuals shows us that the internet truly is a remarkable and unpredictable place. And I hope that as the internet becomes more and more of a respectable way of earning a living, that there will be better infrastructure to support overnight sensations like them. 
We're excited to be a part of this platform and we're excited to have the freedom to tell stories we want to tell. This is one of the only platforms on earth where you get to create at the scale that we are while getting feedback directly from the audience. So thank you for being a part of the Yes Theory community and we'll see you next week.